Hello, I'm Seth. I'm from the uh, robotics team Piders, and uh, this video is on linear slides. Uh, so what is going to be in this video? Um, it's talking about uh, what linear slides are, how we use linear slides in our game and how you could use them. Um, what are the parts of linear slides? How can you build them? What is a linear slide? Uh, right here, this is a video sort of showing how a uh, complete linear slide looks and uh, it, to some degree how it would operate. Normally there would be strings pulling it, but we'll get into that later. Um, but it just shows how smoothly it moves. And linear slides basically uh, tr change rotational motion into linear motion. Uh, they don't have to extend and telescope really massive distances. Uh, they can be used for lots of things, just any basically sliding motion. They can be on 3D printers and other things. So how do we use a linear slide? Um, this is our robot from the uh, Rescue game. Uh, you can see that we're using linear slides to deploy the hook, which will pull our robot up, onto the bar. Right here, this is our robot doing its hang um, from the rescue game. It has This part doesn't really exactly have anything to do with linear slides, um, except for the fact that we use the linear slides to deploy it. Uh, now it's just pulling the robot up using a worm gear. It was fun uh, this year seeing how other teams found a way to hang on the bar from the tape measure uh, to a few other things. Basically, any linear movement, vertical or horizontal, is how you can use a linear slide. Potato. Okay, uh, here you can see uh, a good use of a um, horizontal uh, linear slide. That's We use that to uh, push up the basket that holds the blocks during the rescue game. This robot was just sort of a uh, mate just for this one competition. It was just a scrimmage. Uh, so now let's uh, let's start with the parts of the linear slide. Uh, you can use two. We use two different forms of uh, extruded aluminum T slot. Uh, we used um, 80, 80 20 uh, extruded aluminum. Uh, it's heavier, but it uh, it's stronger. It's also more expensive though. Um, and then the smaller one is uh, that's Misumi. Uh, that is it's lighter and just smaller. Here are two common forms of 8020 that are used in the first tech challenge. Uh, they're both a part of the 10 series. The one on the right, the smaller one, that's the 1010. And the one on the left is the larger one, that is the 1020. Which is basically just like having two pieces of 1010 stuck together. Here are uh, two basic parts that are really helpful when working with 8020. Uh, they are the locking T-nuts uh, and the quarter 20 button head screw. Here you can see the locking T-nut. Uh, you can you use the screw to tighten it down in. As you can see that's not moving anywhere. The next part uh, used in building linear slides are the linear bearings. These are really important. They make the linear slide slide. On the left you can see a fully constructed linear bearing. It's screwed into the extruded aluminum. Um, and then on the right, you can see a deconstructed linear bearing. You can see the plastic parts. That's what make the, the linear slide slide so well. Uh, here just is us assembling the linear slide. So you can see you use the T, a large T locking nut, uh, and you screw it in, helping stabilize it. When buying the parts needed uh, for the linear slide, linear bearings, uh, their 8020 part number is 6730. Uh, they cost anywhere from $40 to $60, so they're not that cheap. You can buy them on Amazon, Granger, Walmart.com, or eBay. We bought ours on eBay. Um, it takes six linear bearings to make a four-stage linear slide, which is the linear slide. We're showing you in this video, so as you can see, it gets pretty pricey pretty quick. Uh, here is a linear bearing that we constructed for the Misumi, the smaller extruded aluminum. First, uh, we had 3D printed it, but it kept breaking, so we had it uh, someone machine it for us. 
as you can see here this is just it screwed in this is the linear bearing screwed into the extruded aluminum Misumi uh, yeah it slides pretty easily this is just a better angle on it it shows you why it's called a T slot because uh, it looks like a T slides pretty nice this is me explaining uh, how our linear slide was rigged uh, yeah. So the way this works is the extruded aluminum is connected to the linear bearing um, and that goes all the way through all of these. Um, the linear slide um, is connected all by this string. Uh, this string is hooked around these bearings. Um, these bearings right here. They're ball bearings so they spin easily. Um, and the way that we get the vertical movement that is so crucial to the vertical slide is uh, the string is then hooked to a motor down there and as the motor spins the string tightens which then decreases the distance between the bottom of the um, the bottom of the extruded aluminum to the top of the other extruded aluminum um, so when those are pulled together, uh, they go up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Next, we'll show you uh, how you assemble the linear slides. Uh, right here is just a sort of quick look at how uh, they slide together. Here you can see uh, how the linear slide works and the linear bearings with the linear slide. On the top, you can see the connection points um, and how it slides freely on the bottom. On the other side... Uh, it's basically the same thing, just flipped. Slides freely on the top, but is connected on the bottom. So here's our linear slide. Um, if you pull out the first and last stage, uh, you can see that both are made from 1010 uh, extruded aluminum. Each bar is a single space wide. If we extend the pieces in the inner stage, you can see that they are both made of 1020 extruded aluminum. So each bar is double the width. The reason for this is each linear bearing has to slide past the linear bearing next to it without running into each other. The inner bars or stages which are two pieces wide need to have the sliding points for one linear bearing on the same bar as the connection points for the next linear bearing this is how we keep the linear bearings from bumping into each other. If we move the connection points here to the same channel the other linear bar is sliding on, mm -hmm. we can use a 1010 uh, bar of extruded aluminum by moving the linear bearings up. So if we stack them like this and create this stepped effect, we could move the linear bearing over one slot and use a 1010 piece of extruded aluminum opposed to the 1020 piece, letting us have a narrower and lighter linear slide. Unfortunately, it would be taller because it would not be able to collapse all the way. So you can see now we've made a slide out of 1010 as opposed to the 1020, which were the wider pieces in the middle. The differing length of these pieces is just because we used whatever pieces we found lying around in our 80-20 pile. As you can see on the top, we have the linear bearings. They're connected in a sort of staircase pattern because they're stacked on top of each other now. Like we said earlier, this makes the overall length of the linear slide a bit taller. But on the bottom, there aren't any linear bearings. We did use these spacers that come with the linear bearings. They provide a guide to keep the bottoms sliding in the aluminum channel. Now if we did have linear bearings attached on the bottom, like right here, they would bump into each other and get in each other's way. You wouldn't be able to get the slides to go up. So instead, we just use the spacers. And you can see that the spacers slide in the channel, but they don't lock it in place or keep it from pulling apart. The way that we've seen some other teams fix this problem is they attach something to the spacer, something like a washer to fit in the T-groove. This washer doesn't actually fit, but you can get one that fits. 
Or what we've seen some teams do is they'll just bend the washers to fit perfectly into the T-channel. And then this washer would attach to the spacer right here. And that's similar to the way that we used our Misumi linear bearings that we made for our robot. The linear bearing slides in place and keeps the extruded aluminum from separating. So we used this type of linear bearing on the top and bottom, so we did not have to use the staircase thing. And we didn't lose any height on our slide. Here you can see uh, ball bearings. And uh, right here is ball bearings, uh, how we use them. It's important that they can slide really freely and fast and easily so they don't get hung up on the string. Here we're getting into how you thread the strings. Uh, it's important that the strings are threaded through the bearings. Uh, in continuous threading, uh, it's one single piece of string threaded through each and every single bearing. Uh, there's a different form of threading uh, called cascading. Uh, we'll get into that in a different video. We're going to focus on continuous threading for this one. Here uh, we're threading the string through the bearings. Uh, the, the string will come up from the uh, motor and thread through each of the bearings, uh, top to bottom. And at the final stage, you just have to tie it off. Okay. Here you can see all the parts of the linear slide working. You can see the extrude aluminum, the linear bearing. Uh, it's both 1010 and 1020. So yeah, it's a working linear slide with all the parts. Uh, thank you for watching our video on linear slides. Hope you found it helpful. Um, if you have any questions on it, just uh, leave a comment and we'll try our best to answer. Uh, thanks.